I like the fact that that has all the verses because the CDs that I actually had to the nursing home only, I think, had three of those, like the first, the third, the first, second, and last. Heavenly Father, we thank you. This is a glorious opportunity to join together with brothers and sisters in worship of you, our Lord. Father, we pray for those who are not here. They need fellowship just as much. Lord, we pray for brothers and sisters that are suffering under the weight of the storm. Lord, we pray for brothers and sisters under persecution all around the world. And they should be rejoicing as we should as well. For you are a mighty king, and we are anxiously awaiting your return. Lord, we pray for the health and growth of this fellowship. We pray that you deem us worthy that this branch may grow. Lord, we pray that your message today is revealed upon our hearts. We say these things in your most glorious Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. It's hard not to get excited about the next couple of chapters because this is our great promise. It's heaven. Yes, we will be getting to some of those seals that uh, Christ will break, but there's promise for the overcomer, and the promise is heaven. Chapter 5 is a continuation of this glorious blessing. We will witness Christ crucified and glorified. We will witness hosts of angels and 24 elders once again. We will also witness the church once again. Again, popular opinion that the church simply observing tribulation from the mezzanine is not biblically correct. On the contrary, we will be present by those who have already been glorified, those who remain, and those who sleep, or perhaps their bodies remain in the earth. So join me in chapter 5 of Revelation. And I saw, and in the right hand of him that sat on the throne, a book written within on the backside and sealed with seven seals. Now this book is, uh, as it is referred, as a scroll uh, written on the inside and on the back, uh, where it was known in the ancient world as a contract. This is really fascinating stuff, folks. Um, or a deed. In this case, it's a deed to earth. Seals are placed to prevent unlawful entry. The Hebrew law requires three witnesses for three seals. The more seals required, more witness, uh, and it is of higher importance. In this case, we have the holy deed signified by seven seals, seven being a number of completion, seven the number of perfection, which again, you will see a numerous number of times throughout Revelation. Um, and if you would turn with me quickly to Ezekiel, chapter two, Verse 9, we'll start there. And when I looked, behold, an hand was sent unto me, and lo, a scroll of a book was therein. And he spread it before me, and it was written within and without. And there was written therein lamentations, and mourning, and woe. So as you see, Ezekiel was aware of this, and prophesied this as well. Let's move into chapter 2. Or excuse me, verse 2. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? Now this uh, strong angel, incidentally, um, they believe was Gabriel. Um, Gabriel, his name means the strength of God. Now it's interesting, but we've addressed this before, that everything seems so loud in heaven. An interesting idea was brought to my attention that perhaps it's because it is heaven um, and being in the flesh and witnessing spirit. Um, but I have another idea. The loud voice 
constant reference of means that they're not ashamed, they're proud. Because if you speak quietly, you don't feel as glorious. And it doesn't have the same They're proud, not in fear. They're bold. God likes to turn it up. Likes it when we turn it up. Who is worthy to open the book? Verse 5. Excuse me. Verse 3. I need new glasses. <laughs> and no man in heaven nor on earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book neither to look thereon. Now this is a really neat part that I wanted to address. And no man in heaven, nor on earth, nor under the earth. Okay, who goes to heaven? Those who are saved, the elect chosen of God. Commentary professes it's a universal expression, not a division or three here. Uh, I see it as the elect in heaven and on earth and all the, under the ground. Okay, so the idea that uh, the church is not represented seems to be a little uh, skewed. Again, if he's making the reference to those in heaven, and he's using it in conjunction with those on earth and those under the earth, I believe he's clearly referring to the church. Verse 4, And I wept, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look upon thereon. How often we forget, you know, who and what our sovereign God is. Beloved John, the one who was closest to Christ, was one that remained in the boat. He too was in awe at the resurrection of Christ. And now we see him crushed that no man could open the seal, mourning the fate of himself and his brethren. How often we forget. O ye of little faith. Verse 6. And one of the elders saith unto him, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. The victory, the fierce strength represented by the lion, the root being the first coming of Christ. This is victory. It's shouting out of verse 5. In verse 6, And I beheld a lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb. And it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth onto the earth. Now we have the victor, the lamb, victorious over sin and death. This is exciting, but it's also the image of him being slain and alive. Signs of slaughter, but he is alive. Seven horns being a perfect power. Not a defenseless lamb. Sovereign power and wisdom, the judgment of the seven eyes and the seven spirits. As we proceed, I can't tell you again how truly I excited I am about this. This is glorious. Now here's the part I found confusing. Verse 7. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat on upon the throne. I must have read this a million times. I'm like, Jesus the Lamb of the Lion. Alright. How did he take the scroll from himself? Because he's the one that was on the throne, right? We've already determined that. I was confused. Praise God and the Holy Spirit. It's a witness of Christ the Redeemer and Christ our King. You see, you can't witness the two separately if there's one in front of you. You can't see within. 
The Lamb and the King upon the throne is an image of the greatest of fruits of the Spirit, love. So this is why it was presented to John in this way, because you can't see within. If it was just Christ on the throne, you wouldn't understand the Lamb and the Lion. It had to be represented that way, so we understood clearly what was represented, who the Redeemer is, who our victor is, in addition to him being our mighty king. It's going to get more exciting as it goes on. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Now, if you do a little research on just the harp itself, harp, there's lyre, there's lute, there's psalter, there's trigon, there's sakwut, there's kinar, uh, a stringed instrument uh, to accompany songs to God. Religion being the belief in worship of God, worship, singing praise with a loud voice. Glory, glory, hallelujah, our King. Bowls of incense common in the Old Testament are offering a pleasant smoke in the temple, symbolizing people's prayers, prayers of the saints. Each and every one of you are baptized. Our prayers a sweet, savoring smell to our Lord. Verse 9. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof, and thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. A new song coming from the heart. When we give hymns to God, are they joyful? Are they full of joy? Are they full of glory? Are they full of praise? Fresh and new. New love. He redeemed us. The good news of God's children. The very purpose of our singing a new song. His precious blood. The blood of Christ is amazingly powerful. It saves and washed clean multitudes. So we sing a new song for the blood of Christ. Verse 10. And hath made us unto God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Here we witness, by his blood, these wretched sinners glorified. Us, glorified as joint heirs, kings and priests. That is amazing grace. Verse 11. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels around about the throne and the beasts and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. As I stated earlier, this is a holy deed. And in order to break the seals, it is required to be witness. Hosts and myriads, there were so many that he couldn't count them. A number of angels that was immeasurable. The same as Christ was born. And they sang to him too. Verse 12. Again, this is very exciting, folks. Pay attention. Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing seven times. Seven things. Power, the endowment to direct all. Riches, bounty of fruits that are overflowing. Wisdom, 
the intelligent discernment and level of rabbinical knowledge beyond human comprehension. Strength, a state of being that is complete in its fullness of energy. Honor, the highest esteem to he who is worthy. Glory, the eminence of honor, the acclaimed magnificence. Blessing, the favor of God, the benediction of his sovereignty. Power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. He is worthy. Verse 13. And every creature which is in heaven, you are creatures of God, made by the Creator. Those elect who have been chosen to have died in Christ. And on the earth, those who remain, you and I. And under the earth, and such are in the sea, and all that are them that hurt, I say, blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. You're witnessing Christ, holy God, the Lion, Christ, holy man, the Lamb. Once again, the reference to all those in heaven who are on earth and all those in the ground and now we've added some that might be under the water, giving favor to God, to God. Excuse me, giving the favor of God to, to God. Singing his blessings back to him. Often we pray his words back to him. And his sweet savor, he loves hearing our prayers. He loves hearing our voice and we sing it loud, joyful noise. He is worthy. This is a short and glorious chapter. And as he opens the seals, it's going to change a little bit. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty-four elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. Amen. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name, which is above every name. The name is Jesus. Every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth, and the very tongue should confess Jesus Christ as Lord to glory of God and the Father. Philippians 2, 9 through 11. Sing a joyful noise to our God, praising our God, our victor, who went to the cross on our behalf. What glory. What glory. Announcing the Lamb, the Lion, our glorious King, our Victor, sits upon the throne. Chapter 6, we'll be getting into next week. This is the judgment and tribulation. And once again, you will find the church is in that chapter. The opening of the seals to reveal the deed of his righteous and perfect judgment. Without the blood of Christ, we would have to fear that. There are many out there today, those who I call brothers and sisters, who take that very much so for granted. And 
I've addressed that before. Fence riders they don't realize there is no fence. Jonathan, I know you'll be up uh, with your family next weekend. Um, please tune into chapter six. You'll find it very fascinating. Lord, we thank you for your blessing. We thank you for sending your son to the cross on our behalf. He hung on the cross instead of us. It is supposed to be us there. And by your glory, your grace, we die with him, our sins with him. And every day, every day, we pray that every one of those burdens are burned away from us. As we grow closer to you, this intimate knowing of your Son is our life's mission. We pray every day and we understand the burden of becoming more like your son. It means persecution. And this is something we are to rejoice in, gladly accepting it. Times are gonna get more difficult, Lord, and we know this, we see it as handwriting on the wall the irony is it's the same words. We watch this nation crumble. We are grateful for the time that we have to be able to worship publicly. We know that someday that'll change. But it'll be a stepping stone to the return of you we say these things, Lord, with all adoration and anticipation of our sovereign King, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord.